What's up guys, I'm back. So today I got a video on how to wash your compression clothing. I've gotten some requests about it, so here I am trying to make it happen. Now, I'm assuming that you're not trying to hand wash these. Uh, most of the directions that you see on compression gear actually tell you to hand wash it. I don't hand wash mine, so I'm assuming you're not trying to do that either. Otherwise, you'd probably just go and hand wash it and say forget this video. But to take care of that, we're going to run through a few tips just to help you take care of your compression clothing a little bit better. The first thing, which might seem simple, but not, maybe not so simple, depending on how often you actually wash your clothes. Well, let's face it, a lot of guys out here, you know, aren't a big fan about washing their clothes or, you know, or how you go about doing it. So having compression gear, you know, can be a bit of a task because it's just an extra step in the process of actually trying to get your laundry done, which is a task in and of itself for us sometimes, right? So, the first thing I would do is to separate your clothing. Before you ever get down to the point of the washing machine and dealing with that, separate the clothing. Get the compression gear away from the heavier fabric clothing like jeans and maybe jackets and stuff like that that have zippers on it that can cause a lot more friction in that washing machine than maybe other lighter fabric stuff like maybe your socks and your underwear type of stuff. I'm not saying you have to completely separate your compression gear. I'm not that anal about it, but I do make sure that I keep it away from some of the from those heavier fabric clothing. And besides, it just makes it a lot easier when it's time to wash your clothes if you know exactly what type of clothing is where. If I need my underwear and I need my socks and all the other stuff, I know exactly where it is. Versus if I have everything bunched together, then it just really makes the process just really tedious. And you know, I'm a guy, I don't feel like doing laundry as it is, and I don't get to fold my laundry right away, so I like to have my stuff sorted because I'm gonna be reaching in that hamper every now and then. That's just the honest truth. I know somebody else is out there shaking their head saying the same thing, so don't judge me. The next thing I would do when it's time to actually go and wash your clothing is before you put it in there, make sure you get a mesh laundry bag. That's right, get the mesh laundry bag to put the compression gear inside you put that inside the washing machine, not just the compression gear. The, la the mesh laundry bag will help to actually protect your clothing. We did this a lot when I was playing football. All the football players got their mesh laundry bags. We threw all our stuff in there, and dirty as it was, we throw the mesh laundry bag in the washing machine, whip it around, throw it in the dryer with the mesh laundry bag. All of us was still in there come out and we're good to go. Now this is football so obviously we don't need like pristine stuff but it did do the job and it should do the job for your for your compression gear to help protect it especially if you're dealing with something with a machine that has like an agitator the little spinny thing in the middle it has an agitator and that's great for helping to break up dirt and stains and things like that but we're talking about a compression gear that we kinda wanna take care of so the mesh laundry bag is another layer in between that that will that will still not prevent it from getting a good deep clean. So get a mesh laundry bag, you can grab it at Wally World, something like that. It's not expensive at all, it's just mesh and it works, it gets the job done. The next thing I would definitely recommend that you do is just to flip it inside out. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep the direct friction from hitting those outside fibers that we're a little more concerned about and it'll also help get it a deeper clean because we're wearing it on the outside right on the inside I mean and when we do that we most of the dirt and sweat and things like that it's gonna be on the inside of the shirt we don't have to worry about external stains so much because it's underneath another layer and because of that you know it, it just makes more sense to focus the washing efforts on those internal fibers to get that clean that we want and we don't have to worry about damaging those outside fibers quite as much. The next thing I would do is avoid those heavy detergents. I know we want to get our stains out, we want our stuff to be nice and clean, but there's really no need for us to be hitting it with things like bleach and other heavy detergents that could really do some damage to the, to the fabric. Again, we're wearing the stuff underneath. so it. In my opinion, it doesn't need to be pristine clean as far as, you know, external looks. You know, this shirt, yeah, I don't want stains on this shirt, but this shirt, how, are you really going to see it? How often do other people actually see your compression gear? Unless you're taking your clothes off in front of a woman who actually cares, 
any other time, it's really not that big of a deal. 99% of the time, I would say nobody else is going to see it. I mean, so just think about it that way. Yeah, you want it to look good, but who's going to see it? And I would rather my compression gear last way longer than making sure it looks amazing all the time. And that's also another reason why I like the black ones, because it's less concerned that I'll have for stains other than like deodorant stains which are gonna come out when you wash it. That was one thing I don't have to worry about. The deodorant stains are coming out. I'm good to go in that on that respect. Now the last thing I would do, and this is a this is a big one guys, we want to avoid the dryer. What I would recommend get you a drying rack. These are not expensive, they're lightweight. This one in particular does take up a lot of space, but you don't have to get this one. I just like this one because I use it for my exercise clothing as well. I sweat terribly. I mean, dripping sweat. And the last thing I want to do is put my super sweaty, dirty clothes straight in the dirty clothes hamper. It's just going to create an atomic bomb just smell that is, is going to devastate the whole house. So I dry my clothing before I put it in the dirty clothes uh, hamper. You can use this for your compression gear. When you done or when you're done washing it, just lay it over the top of the of the uh, drying rack and that will be enough for your clothing to dry. I'm not a huge fan of hanging it just because the gravity of pulling it down could potentially wear on the, wear on the fibers a little bit more, particularly when it's wet. You know, it, it's not the hugest deal and if you're going to do it that way, I, just go ahead and do it. But this is my preference. I would rather go with the drying rack instead of uh, actually just hanging my clothing. But if I had to worry about anything, it would be the drying process. The washing part, you know, and all the things that I mentioned in that, is it probably won't be nearly as big of a deal as you putting that massive amount of heat into the fabric of your compression gear. You doing that is probably going to do much more uh, damage to the material and if you can avoid that you will be doing yourself a huge favor it is a bit of a, it is a bit of an annoyance to have to you know air dry but it will probably be give you the most bang for your buck and again if you get a drying rack it's probably actually very simple you just toss it on there and you forget about it come back a day or so in a day or so or whatever and you're good to go so guys, that's all I got for this video. I don't like to make things too complicated. You know, that's just not how my brain works. So hopefully this helps you in dealing with your compression gear. And again, don't stress over it too much. Make sure that you check me out at livingwithgyno.com. That's my blog that just helps guys with gynecomastia with just all the issues related to it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you next time. Peace out.